Add in our clasp again, height of contour, then down in the undercut. Height of contour, then down in the undercut. The individual tooth isn't always gonna get you. It's gonna be the path of insertion between multiple teeth. That's the thing that's gonna zap you. Every once in a while still zaps me um, to this day. So keep your eyeballs out for those. That's, you know, that's the one thing that'll get you. Investing, you know, this is like a, doing acrylic partial. Invest it, cover the clasps with the stone, that's fine. Spruing, <clears throat> this is gonna sound strange and against everything we were taught, but I want you to attach the sprues to the thinnest areas. All right, we're always taught thick to thin when we cast or do anything. I want you to go thin to thick. I need you to keep back pressure. If it flows into an open area, it's gonna flop around and it's gonna trap air. You attach it to the thin areas, it's gonna fill fan out, fill across, and you should have zero air trapped in your partial. So, put my, spr my sprue here, not up in here. Here, not up in here, all right? <clears throat> so this is how you should do it. These sprues are about three and a half millimeters across. It's 316 utility wax. It's fairly inexpensive, it's nice and pliable, or it's really good for a sprue wax. Don't get the red, because it'll make a, a mess of your boil out tank, so white is much better. Um, so this is how not to sprue. This is a friend of mine in Poland, believe it or not. And uh, he sent me a picture, Chris, what am I doing wrong? And I said, well, what? we aren't doing too much right when it comes to spruing. Not only did he run a sprue right here to which there's a good you know, resorption of the ridge there, but he actually run a little, little tail pieces up to actually you know, get m you know, more of into the bad area. And so that material just enters in there and just flops around. Now, um, what I would do is I would totally do away with this sprue here and instead bring it off, come around and attach it to the facial. And I do that for two reasons. One, I usually can find thin areas because the flanges usually kind of slope out a little bit and, and, and you know, and you can even add on to the flange a little bit just to get it, you know, more and then just trim it off later. And the second thing is, is you always want to look at your partial and your spruing as one thing. So in other words, what do I have here? I have a lot of volume, which is the lingual of this whole partial. And now I got all my spruing. Everything's in the middle. And I want to keep this balanced. Everything's in the middle. And what's going to happen is those sprues are, oh, everything when it's heated up, heated up, expands. And when it cools down, it shrinks. All right? It's all percentage. So when we duplicate our model, there's a little growth to that model. The shrinkage of the partial during the time, it counteracts that and everything's fine. But in this case, we have all this volume in the center. We can get a little, sometimes we can get a little pull in. And now we have this little bounce. If you run that sprue out and around, attach it here, and out and around, attach it here, and then we have one up the middle. Now, look how everything looks balanced. And now they're going to have a tug. These guys are going to have a tug of war with the material in the center, and they're going to wind up having a stalemate, and it's not going to move anywhere. 